today why creators should never ever read the reviews and how I learned that again the hard way. <laughs> First a thought, don't be distracted by criticism. Remember the only taste of success some people have is when they take a bite out of you. Zig Ziglar. Well, I was writing today's journal and an email came in from a site called Chartable. Having absolutely no attention span, especially when I'm trying to write, I opened the email. I think I was enrolled in Chartable back when my Drift with Air and Sleep stories first came out through another company almost exactly two years ago. So through it, I get reports of rankings of my stories, how many downloads in the past week, if I have risen or fallen in the standings, that sort of thing. So here we are after last week's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Delightful. Now, unlike when I was in radio and where we stood determined whether the show was a success and would keep going or the powers that be would give us performance bonuses or go in and start making changes, what the rankings are for the podcasts I do don't really matter. I know the real-time one I do for the Canadian Real Estate Association is out of my hands, so I can only hope it's hitting the target realtors. Gracefully and frankly with Lisa Brandt and me is now growing with our 21st episode about to drop on Thursday. Boy, do we talk about a lot of things like the nudist camp she worked at, menopause, all sorts of stuff. But we saw a slight drop last week when we ever so slightly dipped our toes into politics. And that was just in the teaser clip. Just that one segment about passports and whining Canadians had a woman posting on my Facebook page that she hoped I didn't support Trudeau as he's, in her words, a monster. I thought, okay, let's just not mention anyone's name ever again. Don't want to alienate anyone, right? Now with Drift, the steady climb towards 200,000 downloads shows me that I'm going in the right direction and I have numbers and comments like the beautiful ones on Facebook the other day to confirm that. While I was poking around in Chartable though, I saw this as my overall ranking, 4.4 out of 5. There was this lovely recent review that I'm, well, I'm honestly reluctant to share because it is so nice, but I will. Aw, then because I'm me, I have to find something to make me feel unworthy. So I scrolled the ratings a bit and I found one. Yes, one review from last November. And once I got over my surprise, I thought, oh, you've got to see this. One star, one review. And that's the one I gave more time to than any other as I scrolled through. And then then I remembered a nasty exchange via email that I had with someone who had seen me on CTV's The Social the first time at about that time and she called me all kinds of names. I basically told her to go away and called her a judgmental something. I mean, that had to be it, right? Not definitely, but most likely. It does happen. People who don't like another's politics go on to slag their book without having read it. I'm getting my hair cut tomorrow, by the way. Envious competitors, and to be clear, I don't think there are mean people in the sleep community, go on to the sites of others and try to tank their ratings. In the movie business, if someone has a near-perfect ranking on Rotten Tomatoes, some so-and-so will post a negative one just to keep them from the cherished 100% fresh rating. But then again, maybe this person thought that my telling of, oh, Cinderella or the Frog Prince or Alice in Wonderland was disrespectful and arrogant. What part? The five minutes of relaxation with spa music, the gently told story with usually a happy ending, or the five minutes of waves at the end, I wonder. Hmm. Clearly, I've given this far too much thought, but it happens. Someone will always try to put you in your place. I was inadvertently slighted by a CBC piece I stumbled upon, and I haven't been able to find it again since, on sleep podcasts that didn't mention drift. As far as I could see at a glance, it excluded any Canadian podcasts. That was disappointing, as I would love another chance to spread the word of our sleep stories, on which I spend about 30 hours each, rewriting, recording, editing, and then producing. All a one-person crew here, but it's not personal. I know. What's important is that you're there, and I'll keep putting these stories out as a labor of love. It's not to get rich, that's for sure, but because I always wanted to do something like this, and I love it. 
So if Naughty Stitchman decides that she wants to take me down, let me ask you to help me out. It's easy to leave a rating for a podcast on Apple, for example. Just scroll down from my show and any show page, really, and select a star rating. Then you type, write a review. You can leave one per story if you want. The next tale, spelt both ways, is The Little Mermaid next Tuesday from the Hans Christian Andersen version, just in time for the movie's release next week. In the meantime, I thank you for being here, for listening to Gracefully and Frankly, and of course, for joining our Drift Sleep community. And I thank Chartable for reminding me, never read the reviews. You'd think I'd know that by now, right? Have a great short week, and we'll talk to you again next Monday.